books that will display more statistics and give us more stories from live, large, corporate environments regarding passwords. Anything from, you know, how Health Desk will do password resets. That's something that I would like to hear more about. I do know a lot of help desks, as an example, let's say, if you call them and say, oh, you have lost your password, they will actually send your new password to your manager, and you have to go to your manager to get your new password, as an example. I've seen that many, many times in different countries. Do you trust your manager? So, for Cambridge in the UK in December and for Las Vegas next year, please submit uh, papers, articles, presentations on that as an example. Now, one of the submissions that we got for our uh, current CFP was from uh, Christian, and it's basically, uh, you know, at, well, spend 10 seconds telling you what Montego is. But this one, I mean, I, I, read it, I read it, it was like, yes, I want this, period. So, Chris, I actually do want to do the backstory of the Troy Tilton, so... Uh, <laughs> what? I've got five minutes. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. the original talk that I was going to deliver today was uh, Troy Hunt and I were going to present on how I make cards. Um, with Troy presenting how I've been coded itself and myself presenting the Montego integration. Um, so, that just a little like. Is it too high still? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now we're cooking. Um, so, um, Essentially, my day job for the moment is I work as a pen tester, um, but due to obviously eroding sort of commercials of that industry, um, I've started developing more and more into Multigo itself, um, which is essentially integrating disparate data sources uh, in, into Multigo and then working out um, how to best position the product itself. Um, so I've done this for a lot of companies, um, I've developed transforms for Facebook, uh, for Instagram, uh, for Gravatar, which takes a person's email address, and that's a terrific file, um, and then essentially associates a, a profile picture uh, with that email address, um, recorded future, um, and the most recent one I'm doing is the Redact um, web application, which basically takes... Chinese and European, any sort of creditors on piece, and runs them over your, um, your web blogs, um, and it's essentially used for data leakage and that kind of thing. Um, I've developed transforms in both Canary, uh, which is a third party sort of uh, rapid application for the right work, um, as well as the, the transform sets that are available to preserve them themselves. Um, pretty much everything that I develop is available for free. Um, and you can go to GitHub, look at my repository, and just search on Multigo and find a whole ton of free sort of configuration files and any other documentation that you can go to the Um So the agenda for today is largely to just discuss the integration of the APIs themselves from three vendors, um, Have I Been Honed, French Alarm, and Abusix. Um, have I been paying, as I mentioned before, is Troy Hunt's, um, I guess you could say, pet project. Um, he doesn't really commercialise it um, and sort of put it together to learn about Azura itself. Um, but he's recently started to incorporate um, APIs and that kind of thing. So if you run a, uh, like a tenant in theft service, you can search for the same addresses and it can tell you now that they're actually wrong, this is compromised. But he also offers a lot of uh, alternatives that cost next to nothing. So if you type in your own email address, it will send you back a, a breach uh, email address email from there. Um, breach alarm, so we've, they've offered an API key to me uh, that allows me to support their free API endpoint, uh, which is to the breach emails endpoint. And Abusix, which whose API in the leaked database is currently 
Don't worry about that, actually. Um, <laughs> is currently free. Um, I'll also cover the configuration itself for Maltuga, um, and I'll present a couple of case studies. Um, the case study that I'll present today is on uh, Atlassian. Um, we do make a lot of developer tools. It originally started as a joke, um, but if someone else wants to put forward another example, I'm quite happy to, uh, to look at doing that. Um, I guess I should cover what Maltego is first. Um, so, up on the screen here, um, I have Maltego, and um, essentially the power of it is this view here, which is a bubble view. Um, so, if we look at a, a main view here, what we basically have is, uh, I'll just send it a bit. Uh, email addresses on the top, um, which then feed into a, uh, a post pasting. So, if we're interested to visualise as to which one of those two pastes is the most popular, we switch it over to bubble view, um, we select one, and then we say, okay, I've selected this paste, which one are the... Um, the email addresses that are applicable into that post. And what we find here is that it selected all the, uh, it selected all the email addresses that have come through. We select the lower one and select the parents from there. You can see that we've actually identified, because the bubble itself is slightly smaller, um, that it has less email addresses in coming to it. Um, so what it's essentially used for is uh, link analysis, um, but it also provides a an XML document format which you can use uh, to basically um, use a web service, so you don't need to continually push out new code changes to the end user. Um, the end user can just pick those up automatically. So the first one I'll cover is is have I made point? Um so, what we have, or what I have done with this one is I've integrated all the latest release um, API version two endpoints into it. Um, so this is the getting all the, the breaches for an account. Now an account under Have I Been Pwned is defined as either an alias or an email address. Um, we can also get all relevant pastes to uh, Ghostbin, Pasty, Slexy. Um, et cetera, et cetera, um, where an email address does appear. And we can also get a single breach site itself too. So if you were to run it against Adobe or Hacking Team or any of those, um, you would be able to find out where the email address was breached under what domain and then the history of that breach itself. Um, and as part of this development, we support all the the, the HTTP status codes um, of the API itself. So we essentially take in um, two types of inputs in Multigo. The first one being the uh, the email address, uh, which is the one down at the bottom here, um, which I'll just zoom in on to. Um, the examples that I'm using are taken from the API documentation itself, so they're already publicised and well known. Um, in addition to that, we have a number of uh, we have a number of aliases too that are related to the. Uh, Snapchat uh, database compromise. Um, so, within Multigo itself, it enables you to, in the latest release being Chlorine, um, enables you to position the transforms uh, based on author, uh, then the, the, the transform set. So, transform set is essentially a series of related transforms. Um, to find the individual transforms themselves. 
So in this case, for aliases, we can run uh, the breached uh, accounts endpoint against it. So which I will do now. Okay. So we get two entities returned from there. One is a just a generic entity. Uh, which is the, uh, which essentially allows you to select entities based on if you're using all three uh, providers of information in terms of their API, have I been calling breach alarm and abusex? Um, you can select these individual um, boxes and then if you're an API provider, you essentially do a quality assurance on, on um, your own API itself and what your data set is. Now, as you've probably guessed by what was up the top here, um, so we're related to the Snapchat database one. These aliases have all appeared within Snapchat itself. Okay, and so as a, an investigator, what I would like to investigate is what are the relevant documentation that's against um, Snapchat? So we get essentially the note view here. If we click on the entity, um, we see that same note is repeated here. Now that is text that is returned by the How I've Been Pwned API itself. And it's obviously come back and now said that not only have these aliases been compromised, <coughs> but also the uh, domain itself. Okay. As you can see by all those entities that have been selected. Now this is the PACE um, uh, example. Um, so what we originally started with is Troy gave me um, PASTE, which was identified as 7308488, which is the top one. Um, so what I had essentially done is run all those email addresses that were in one PASTE against another one um, and it's returned uh, PASTE ID 7308044098. Um, now as you can see, in terms of the view itself, the ones that are pointing in to this uh, 7308049 PASTE are not the same uh, post to PASTE that was the one above. So if you were investigating incidents uh, or performing a response you wanted to essentially contain a disclosure. Judging by the fact that a lot of breaches are reposted to pasty, pasting, ghost being uh, quick links, all that continuously, you could pretty much work out that you might want to get a copy of, of both of these pastes because they might indicate that you've been breached at different times and the data's been coming through. Um, now, as one final thing, um, what Montego can do is it will actually automate all of this for you. Um, so I've created two Montego machines. Now, essentially what these are is that they take an input entity and they will do the that's a breach transforms for you, and then if it returns a domain name, it will also check the uh, have I been pwned records for the domain name itself. So, if you're to run it, um, it simply takes an alias.
somewhat struggles. Oh, I'm not sure why it actually does this. The live demo is troll. <laughs> no, uh, well, this goes back to the internet in cut mode. Um, for those of you who are wondering, these demos are actually uh, running from a HP Stream 11, which is like the $200 laptop um, that you can buy. Um, but anyway, uh, moving on, uh, that essentially runs the transforms that are applicable to the email entity first and then to the domain entity that's returned from there. Um, so I'll come back to that one to actually show you um, that it's executed and all that. Um, but just to move along, um, there is one other final thing. Um, against 
like have I been find all the email addresses and then run the breach alarm transform on those email addresses itself and get some more additional information from there. Um, the final one being Abusix. Um, Abusix are, are an interesting mob. Um, if you look at the left side of this diagram, you'll see a number of phrases here. Um, these are actual passwords that people have encoded um, for examples I've taken from Abusix themselves. Um, and We run the transforms against them, and what it gives us back is the clear text password, but also the encoding that was used on the password itself. Um, so if you're able to split um, the password fields, you get what the clear text password is um, that this text uses. If you click on the entity itself, you find that SHA-512, um, that was used to encrypt the password, which is this one above it here. Um, so that's quite good if you want to just send a whole ton of, of passwords off and see if they've been um, broken in the past, um, and then sort of work it from there. Well, I mean, we are going off for one hour break afterwards, yeah. Okay. So, the other service that the music provide is obviously um, just to check an email address. Um, so, this is again one that we can combine um, against all of them. Now, I quite like the music because they say my email address has never been compromised. I can tell you that's false. Um, this is the one I use on Pearl C pair, um, so I know for a fact um, that it has been compromised, but again, this goes back to the various vendors that produce these breach databases could actually do it. Um, but just to present a case study, um, Craig Davids, who's the CSO for uh, Alicia, um, stated that he was going to come to Black Hat. Um, so, just as a bit of fun, I said to him, well, we would look at what Alicia had done in terms of um, if they had been broken into, and these are generally the cases as to what you would actually use them for. So, you can see we start running the transforms there, so we start kicking them all off in one go, and... This is what it looks like um, if you're actually running all three use cases um, or all three APIs against the email address itself. Now, as you can see, Craig himself here is not compromised, so that's obviously a good sign. Um, but as we get down to here, we find that Breach Alarm has listed some of these email addresses as breached. So obviously to find out which ones those are, um, we click on the, the child entity and then select parents, um, but we find that they are both listed at, um, uh, as part of the Adobe breach um, and the hacking tech breach. So that's essentially what you could use to run it against your entire um, Active Directory list, that kind of thing, um, to work out quite quickly where your breaches are. Um, or if you've got any breaches that are coming on board. Um, tomorrow at Black Hat, I'll actually be demonstrating how you can use it as a time machine. Um, so essentially, it runs every hour, um, so you just don't end up hammering the, the Multigo Transport Center. Um, does anyone have any questions? Or just I'm just wondering for any of these sorts of queries into the system, uh, are there any ways of doing so in a privacy-protecting manner, that is, could I ask about my email address without letting you know about my email address? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, could you find out who are actually on Ashley Madison? That's your real question. <laughs> no, no. Um, so, um, I think um, Bridge Alarm takes 
Dial 1, hashing of your email address, um, and music's um, implement Sharp 54. Um, have I been pwned um, doesn't implement anything, and the reason that Troy doesn't state that is because it's very easy to reverse the hashing yeah, exactly. of rainbow tables and all that. Yeah, those are unsolved. Okay, so there's yeah. no sort of homomorphic kind of thing that yeah, it's to give people peace of mind, but it doesn't really change that. A lot of them go into explanations as to why they do it and do it, but you know, no one has a solution for that at the market. Yeah. Give it up for Christian. I think this is really, really interesting, both from the attack and funding side, because basically one of the things I really, really know about users is that. Their next password is going to be their current password plus what? So if, as an attacker, if you can figure out like the naming scheme being used, you can use transforms like this to look up employees of a certain company or organization online to see if they have been reached already in a very easy way. Then you can find out what kind of passwords were they using. And chances are that the passwords they use at some site that don't compromise are pretty are revealing about what kind of passwords or password structures they are using at the time being. So using this, it becomes easier to break in. And as a defender, you can also use this to defend, to have a look at how any of your users been breached in external reaches and eventually do something about that. There's going to be a one hour breakout. There's a chill out uh, in the chill out room. Uh, you know, happy hour, pretty much. Uh, at 5 o'clock, uh, we will have a young uh, uh, female uh, master student from Norway. I've been co supervising her for the past year for a master thesis. And it's basically tell me who you are, and I will tell you your Android lock power. It's a cool talk. So be back at 5. See you then. <laughs>